Good evening, everyone. It's good to be back. I'm your host, Caroline, and welcome to our live event. It's 8 p.m. UK time, therefore it is time to start our IVF webinar. And today, as you can see, we have another special guest. Uh, this is Dr. Claudia Mika. Hi, Dr. Claudia. How are you feeling today? Good evening. I'm good. Thank you very much. How are you doing? All good. Happy to have you here with us, back with us, because, of course, this is not your first webinar with us. So thank you already for joining. And, well, as always, please, please let me know that you can hear me loud and clear. And, of course, we will be able to start with uh, Dr. Claudia's presentation. And remember, it will take approximately 20 to 25 minutes. And after that, as always, it will be time for your questions all you need to do is put those questions in the chat section so that uh, Dr. Claudia can answer them for you. So don't uh, miss this opportunity. Ask anything that you have in mind. And let me just uh, remind everyone that uh, the topic for today is why should fertility clinics be accredited to ensure quality and patient-centered care? So very interesting topic. And I'm sure many of you have been wondering how exactly uh, it should work as well. And uh, Dr. Claudia Mika is also the founder and CEO of Timus International Healthcare accreditation and of course she will be um, able to tell you a little bit more as well so uh, that is it from me remember this is being recorded so you will have a chance to re-watch it and uh, well dr claudia are you ready to begin with your presentation yes i am thank you very much for the introduction i will thank share the screen with all of you thank you so you should see the screen now and the presentation. All is good. But of course, if you let us know that you can see the presentation as well. OK, that would be great. But I guess of all is working. Thank you so much. Go ahead. OK, good. So good evening again from my side. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you here again after the um, April presentation. Um, I gave so thank you very much to IVF Media to um, invite me again and to talk about a bit about quality in fertility treatment. So the title of today's presentation is Why Should Fertility Clinics Be Accredited to Ensure Quality in Patient-Centered Care? And this is from the perspective of you as a patient. So um, and I would like to give you a few examples why we think it's very important that facility clinics are accredited. But before we do that, I would like to give you my personal um, story or my personal experience with it. And this is why I have an, ex an advanced um, interest to have fertility clinics accredited. So I myself started at the age of 26 uh, with IVF treatments. Um, or not with IVF treatments, but with having problems. Um, I was diagnosed with um, endometriosis and over eight years I was operated and operated and operated and um, they couldn't get it. So they told me when I was um, in my early 30s, I should get pregnant to assure that whenever I want to have children, I should start now. And from then, um, for 12 years, we tried to get pregnant. It didn't work. Um, and um, my patient experience was not a good one when I was in these treatments. And I did not experience patient-centered care. So when I started with um, accreditation and quality management, et cetera, et cetera, I always had in mind, when I'm in the position to develop something for fertility clinics, I will do it. And this is what I did. So that's my personal story behind. And um, I would like to start with a few examples. So what we hear from fertility clinics when we discuss with them about accreditation, and I explain you in a minute what it means uh, when we talk about accreditation and quality um, evaluation. So when we hear um, from 
fertility clinics that look for international patients and they say we look for German patients for example or we look for Greek patients or we look for Turkish patients or French patients doesn't matter here we look for German patients German language no nobody is speaking German here at the clinic so would you feel comfortable if you don't speak the language of the country where you are going to receive treatment and nobody is able to talk to you in your mother tongue so I don't think that this is the right way. Another example is um, when it comes to your own safety as a patient and things can happen, things can get wrong. So that you get the answer, no, we don't have malpractice or liability insurance. It's not common in our country. It's a question if this is then safe for you as the patient. Or an IVF center advert in Germany in Germany, we have a very special legal situation for zoocracy. It's forbidden. So if we have an advert saying in Germany, we offer zoocracy with egg and sperm donors, this means the client has no idea about the legal regulations in Germany. So it's wrong advertisement. And the last example I want to give you saying, Yes, of course, we have high patient satisfaction rates. Yes, you will measure that. We know that we are good. Clinical outcome, success rates, indicators, no, we don't have them. So, and this is something which is not acceptable for, for, from my perspective. So having said this, um, the question is, is this all safe for patients? Is this attractive for you as a patient? For me, it would not. And is this legally acceptable for patients? So some may say yes, from the clinic perspective, yes, everything is under control. You may say maybe because you don't know, yes or no, and we would say no. So this is where we work on when we see or when we get such answers that we say, okay, we have some work to be done here. So Healthcare and related services must be safe and of highest possible quality for every patient. I think this is our right um, as a patient. And when we go in international patient management, which means if we cross borders, like we always do or often do in IVF treatment, then we have some additional challenges. So we are coming from different cultural backgrounds as I said in the introduction, we have different country laws in the countries where we are coming from and in the countries where we are going to. There are language barriers. There might be currency and payment issues where I don't go into details today. And finally, we have different ethical understanding about treatment in, in our area here. So I want to touch um, some of these aspects now to give you an idea what we are doing during the accreditation. So why and how does international accreditation help? What does it mean, generally speaking? Of course, there are very complicated definitions and explanations of accreditation, but in the end it means that the clinic has to follow external standards, which we define as an accreditation body, based on international um, understanding evidence-based medicine, we define external standards and they have to be implemented internally in the clinic. And this means that the clinic is forced to review the processes, to update documentation and to also measure, 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 measure outcome success rates, also um, what we had in the beginning, these malpractice issues, so we have to know about incidents that happened, etc. This has to be documented and measured. And in the end, work every day on the best possible patient experience and in a safe working environment. This is three main points what we are looking for in accreditation. Here is just an example of um, our accreditation program, not to go into details, don't worry. Um, just a few examples, but we have 17 different chapters with up to 500 standards 
which have to be fulfilled and implemented before we give our seal, our stamp as an accredited partner organization. So we talk about the nursing, diagnostics, the laboratory, governance, leadership, payment, legal aspects, ethical aspects. These are the different chapters which have to be covered by the fertility clinic to get the certificate at the end. So it's it's hard work and the clinics normally prepare six to 12 months before we do the on-site visit and check if they have implemented everything. So to give you some examples, um, what we look for, so quality of services from the processing point of view. So when you as the patient are processed um, for your treatment. So we ask what is the reaction time of the clinic to respond to your inquiry? So we say it should be within 24 hours that you receive an answer. Is there a contact person for communication organization? So do you have somebody, a name, an email address, a phone number, a WhatsApp number, whatever, uh, where you can get in contact when you have a question? Is the treatment plan and the cost estimation transparent? Is it complete? Do you understand all the positions so to prevent any negative surprises in the end? Are the services for pre-travel, transportation, accommodation, sightseeing or whatever um, is wished and um, applicable, is this available for you? So do you get help? If you don't want help, no problem, but is there a program established? Is there any follow-up and post-travel services? So are you left alone after you have left the, the clinic or is there any contact follow-up procedure for you? This is one thing. And what I said in the beginning regarding the German language or the Turkish language or whatever language, I want to give you just, this is a screenshot from our standards document, just to give you an example how standards are written. So here it is said, the language skills of clinical and non-clinical staff assure proper communication with patients, relatives, referring doctors and other involved staff uh, parties. So this means we want to see a list of spoken languages and the respective grading as well as external translation services that they are available for the involved staff. So that communication in a language understood by both sides is possible. And we do accept interpreters for translation, but it must be assured that interpreters have the respective and certified qualification and are familiar with medical terms. So it doesn't help at all if you have a translator who before worked in politics and is not familiar with the terms you need to know and you need to translate for IVF and fertility treatment. So this is one example from the standards which should help you as a patient to be safe language-wise if there is any communication barrier and language barrier. Another example is now going into the direction of the quality of the professionals. So a professional is not a professional. So we demand that embryologists that are working in accredited organizations are fully trained in all aspects of assisted reproductive technology. So and this means here we have the head of laboratory must have an academic degree. And then we have the laboratory supervisors, clinical embryologists and other technical staff. And we define what kind of background and quality and experience they have to have to be accepted by us for the accreditation. And coming back to the malpractice insurance, this is now the other side of the medal. If we can um, assure that the qualification of the professionals is accordingly, of course, we might not need to use the insurance for malpractice and accidents and liability too much, but it has to be there. So to give you another example, how this standard is um, written, it says malpractice and necessary corrective actions might result in patient harm. This is you. Poor satisfaction rates, high costs and other undesired consequences. And the healthcare provider has implemented individual measures, including insurance covering malpractice, liability, indemnity 
accidents and other um, incidents like natural disasters, etc. So, and the next standard even says that all insurance coverage um, and explicitly those covering my practice have an adequate coverage. So in case something happens, you as the patients are safe. So this means there is an insurance that covers what needs to be covered to assure that further treatment, what is necessary or whatever the damage we don't hope appears, but that that damage is covered. This is another example from accreditation standards. Then we talked about in the beginning about this surrogacy, which is forbidden, for example, in Germany and in some other countries. So we have standards regarding legal and illegal treatments um, that the healthcare provider is aware and has a policy or similar process to address services that are illegal in the patient's home country, but legal in the destination country. So the clinic has to deal with this topic and they have to know from where the patients are coming and that this is legally correct what they are doing, even if it's um, legally correct in Ukraine, in Greece, in UK, in Germany or whatever. But depending on where the patients are coming from, it has to be checked and there has to be a policy. And the last example I want to give you is, it's small letters, I apologize, but I didn't know how to bring it on the screen. Um, to show you um, the full standard. So I will read it for you, don't worry. And uh, yeah, please excuse that it is small letters. It is because, because or, or due to the um, clinical outcome, the indicators were mentioned at the beginning. So we have different standards where we want to learn how the clinic measures outcome and success. And one of the standards says clinical outcome and other outcome parameters indicators or some call it also key performance indicators are defined regularly recorded and analyzed so in other words they are measured and documented and appropriate measures adjustments to or changes of outcome parameters as well as corrective actions are in place so if something is not correctly measured then it has to be reviewed and analyzed and um, has to redefine. And in the second um, red um, box, you see that we have some of the indicators and parameters we want to see. Patient dynamics, clinical outcomes, pre-implantation, genetic diagnostic cycle information, et cetera, et cetera. So percentages, outcomes, um, a lot what we want the clinic to measure, assuring that they know what they are doing and know where and how to improve for the best outcome for you and as the patient. So to summarize what we were talking about, accreditation is a never ending story. There are so many aspects the clinic has to work on every day in, in its continuous quality improvement plans. And it's a professional guide for improvement, effectiveness and structuring. So we try to help to improve and to guide the clinic um, in its everyday life. And in the end, it's to assure that the treatment takes place in a safe, secure, trustworthy and third party accredited environment. And for you, this means that we want to assure that the continuum of care is there from the first contact to the follow-up so that your patient experience um, is the, the best you can get by following standards, by um, standard operating procedures, etc. etc. So coming to my yeah cartoon or whatever, however you want to call it from the beginning. Um, if somebody tells you, yes, we have many awards, we could purchase an award here and we spend a bit of money here and we have awards, then be very careful. Some of the awards are really only purchased and there's nothing, nothing behind. Um, and then ask, do you have any implemented standards which are accredited? And if the answer is no, we don't have them, 
then be very careful, this is not the right way. So this is one option. Um, there is a real certificate of accreditation where there are the standards behind chapter by chapter to be fulfilled. There's an on-site visit by expert, by professionals who check in the clinic, go there for two to three days, depending on the size of the clinic and check everything personally. And then um, give the certificate and the accreditation is awarded or not. It's under reservation or something. This and the clinic has to further work on it. And this should be the right way. And this is a safe way for you as well. Of course, every day something can happen. We are all human beings, but accreditation helps a lot to prevent um, harm from you as a patient. And this is what we all strive for. So this was what I wanted to share with you today. Um, thank you very much for listening. And of course, I'm looking forward to your questions and comments. Thank you very much. And thank you so much once again for your thorough presentation, for explaining all the details on how everything should work and what is important to look out when we are um, well selecting clinic as well. And well, it is time for your question. So as always, uh, I will put those right here on the screen. Of course, we do have some questions ready. And so anyone, if you have any questions, go ahead and type those in so that Dr. Claudia can help you out with those as well. And the very first question is definitely a common one. So what are the most important questions that I should ask the clinic before choosing? So what accreditations are most important? Yeah, that's two good questions. So what are the most important questions that you should ask the clinic before choosing? This was exactly um, my last presentation I gave in April. So um, perhaps you can go back to this presentation because we have many different parts. So it is um, how they communicate with you, how the professional expertise is there, how the technical equipment is there, um, and what accreditations are most important. The problem for fertility clinics is that there are not many accreditations available worldwide. Um, there was a long time that fertility clinics were handled like ambulatory care clinics which is not correct because we have a special group of patients if we even want to call patient, the patients patients. And we have um, the laboratory and the treatment. So two parts which are very important and have to work together. So ambulatory care accreditation does not cover what's going on in fertility clinics. So, um, as far as I know, and this was the reason why, one of the other reasons why we developed such an accreditation system, including the laboratory part and the medical part, let's say, in one accreditation is because it was not available worldwide. So um, I think we are the market leader. We are unique with what we offer. Um, and you can look for laboratory accreditation, only the art laboratory, this is available. And um, but for accreditation itself, there's not much available, unfortunately, yet. We are here to change that situation for you as well. Definitely. Does this answer the question? I mean, we could we could have another complete presentation for you are a very important topic, but just to, in a nutshell to respond to it, does this cover uh, hopefully cover the questions and a short answer to that? Excellent. Thank you so much for that. And just let me remind you that, of course, you are able to simply go to uh, the link I will send you in a minute. Therefore, you will have a chance to also watch the webinar that we had in April on that specific topic. And uh, there will be some uh, more details there as well, of course, for you. Thank you so much for your question. And of course, Dr. Claudia, for answering this. Let's go to the next question that we have right here here. 
Hello, Dr. Mika. How did you get accreditation for Timas International Healthcare Accreditation? Is this a government ruling for the rest of the world uh, to the FDA? I have researched and spoken to a number of clinics that have FDA approval and registered in Europe for SEG coding. They seem to have all the points you have mentioned. So why would you need? Would they need your accreditation? Is it so that you could recommend them? I assume this involves a cost for the agencies and clinics. Okay, so again, these are a lot of questions in yes. one question. So let's go from the beginning. step by step. So, um, how did you get accreditation for Timos International Healthcare Accreditation? So, Timos International is um, the standards are accredited by ISQA, IEEA. This is the International Society for Quality in Healthcare. So, this is the accreditation body for accreditation bodies. Uh, and the only in the world. So all the international accreditation bodies do have accreditation from this organization. FDA is the US Food and Drug Administration. So they don't have standards, but in some of the countries, and I think this is the next part of your question, of course, the clinics have to be licensed somehow and have to get the approval. And for the licensing and the approval, of course, they have to fulfill um, some of, and this might be overlapping to standards we have as an accreditation body. But patient management, patient-centered care is not part of any FDA approval. Um, so therefore, that's a complete different direction. It's not the legal approval we are talking about. It's the patient-centered care and continuum of care, which is supported by technical licensing related stuff definitely and other very important parts so why would somebody need our accreditation nobody needs to go for it it's voluntary so there's it's it's everybody is free to choose however as i try to explain a bit um when we talk about services non-clinical services and harmonization cooperation within the team this is covered as well as outcome uh, measures this is covered by accreditation so the last um, is i assume this involves a cost for the agency and clinics so the agency has no if the agency is the um, the facilitator if you mean the facilitator then there is no fee for an agency this is a completely different story the clinic, of course, has to pay for the services. They want to qualify, they have a benefit, they have an added value because of accreditation, and of course, they have to pay for it. Can you provide details of the cost? The cost depends on the size and the number of cycles for fertility, and it starts between seven and 8,000 euro, and it goes up to 15, 17,000 euro roundabout um, for um, the accreditation. And for the three year cycles, we have um, an, an annual fee around about 1000 euro in addition. So this is just approximate, um, but it's published. Uh, we have a fee calculator on our website, so um, you can check it there and or get back to me to get a, a more detailed um, cost estimate. And again, thank you so much for your question, of course, and your assistance with that. And uh, just so you know, of course, if you would like to get in touch and get some more details, as Dr. Claudia has mentioned, this is the link where you will be able to simply get in touch with her as well. And this is the link where you can also find the other webinar I have mentioned. And uh, let's have a look. There is another question right here. How can I be sure that the information provided by the clinic, for example, sex traits, are indeed real? You can't. The simple answer, you can't. If you haven't seen the numbers and figures, how they measure it, they can publish anything. This is something where we have an eye on. So um, when we go and do the accreditation and we ask for uh, the success rates, then we ask, okay, how do you base that on? Can we see the raw data? And we want to see that. But just published information on the website, 
doesn't tell you anything. That's that's the tricky part of it, unfortunately. And I don't have a better answer for you. You can just trust. I mean, if the clinic has a good reputation, um, they will not lie or give you false information. They have um, an intention to get the best reputable information about them. But how to compare and if they don't explain transparently how they on what they base the success rates. We had this discussion um, in April in, in um, the presentation and afterwards in the discussion. It's very difficult, very difficult. This is why we one of our focus is um, to, to look in more detail in it, unfortunately. Okay, thank you for that once more as well. And uh, now, as I do not see any more questions, so let me just remind you that if you would like to ask anything, this is the time to do so. So go ahead and type your questions. Uh, but in the meantime, Dr. Claudia, I would like to ask you, so because you have many requirements uh, when it comes to accrediting uh, the clinics, have you been able to add anything that's, you know, with what's going on nowadays? Or do, are you also checking if uh, the clinic uh, is taking every measure, like when it comes to COVID-19? We, um, thank you very much for the question. Um, I didn't mention it here. It's not a completely different story, but um, it's, it's a bit of a different topic. So we, um, when we got to know about the pandemic um, in March and April, and when it all started, we were contacted by some of our partner clinics and hospitals who had to completely close the clinics because of the pandemic. And um, they contacted us and said, okay, what do we need to do? We are closed now. Uh, we never, we were never closed. So what have, do we have to do to reopen? Um, can you help us to prepare? And at that time, we sat together with the experts here in the team, and we um, started developing standards how to prepare for what we call the COVID safe standards, COVID nineteen safe standards. So we have a guideline now with um, seven chapters of standards, how to minimize the risk of transmission for COVID-19 in clinics and hospitals. So we are not talking about how to treat COVID-19 patients because this is covered worldwide. We talk about what to do, how to protect staff and how to protect patients and um, visitors and relatives from getting COVID-19. So these standards are available free of charge. So this was our contribution to the pandemic that we said the economy worldwide, also in healthcare, of course, completely went down. So, um, but we want to help and we de define and develop these standards. So everybody, even patients, if they're interested, can go on our website, um, just go on the COVID-19 button, let's say, and there's more information about um, the standards and you can simply download them after registration on the website. And then you can see how you should prepare to be able to accept patients in a safe environment. This is what we did. And we do have a certification system for it. It's not a must. So the, the standards, as I said, are free of charge. But if somebody wants to get our evaluation, our assessment, and the confirmation that they are COVID-19 safe, um, our assessors check it, and um, we provide a certificate as COVID-19 safe clinic or hospital. Yeah. And excellent. Thank you so much for answering this one, of course, as well, because uh, nowadays, I guess, patients also need to be uh, aware of that. Of course, they also need, will ask about it. So it's good to know uh, that, that you know, you also are uh, looking out for it. So thank you so much for uh, confirming that. 
And uh, well, uh, I guess we will be slowly finishing, but uh, I would also like to remind everyone that uh, you remember that if you would like to ask any questions, you can also use the link I have just sent to you. And this will be uh, sent to uh, Dr. Claudia directly. And I'm sure she'll be more than happy to help you out with your questions, but also uh, with anything that you need. And uh, we will be finishing for today. And well, um, Dr. Claudia, is there anything you would like to add? Um, I would like to thank you for your very important questions. These are the important questions you had. So I hope that I could answer them um, sufficiently for you so that you get an idea for what to ask for or where to look into more detail when you you're about to choose a clinic and um, there are a lot of very very good fertility clinics worldwide so i'm sure you will be in good hands accreditation can be one additional tool or one additional information beside other information you can look for and um, just to be assured that we do our best to assure that whenever you are in such a clinic that you have the best experience for your treatment and that you're in the best hands uh, we can imagine. This is really what we want to achieve and this is what we work on. Um, there's another, just a last question. I just yes, exactly. The Thank you so much. Ukraine is accredited um, at this moment. No, none of them. Mm -hmm. okay. Not in Ukraine. All right. Mm -hmm. And if you could share, where do you have uh, the, uh, what countries uh, do you have the clinics that have been received the accreditation? So we have, um, we have clinics in Greece and you see the complete list. If you go on our website and look for the accredited partners, you see a long list, um, not only for fertility clinics, but also for hospitals and dental care, etc. So you can just check um, in, we are from, from Colombia to Thailand, we have clinics and hospitals, not all of them uh, fertility clinics because the fertility clinic application is rather new. So it's our version 1.0, which we finalized last year. Um, but for the other uh, um, organizations, you can see them all listed with additional information where they are, what they focus on, etc. That's all published uh, free of charge on our website. All right. Excellent. Thank you so much for this. And of course, there's a thank you from the patient right here as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank all right. You. So thank you once again, everyone, for joining us tonight. And uh, it's good to have you back here. I know some of you have been our frequent uh, attendees. So thank you so much for coming back and uh, joining our webinars. And of course, Dr. Claudia, it is uh, always nice to have you with us. So thank you so much for presenting this very important topic. I mean, lots of patients are struggling with this kind of thing. So thank you so much for uh, presenting and thank you so much for, uh, for your time today. And well, I know it's not our last webinar, so I'm just looking forward to the next one. Everyone have a lovely evening, Dr. Claudia, as well. Have a lovely, wonderful evening. Thank you so much. And let me just remind everyone that this has been recorded. So, of course, you will have a chance to watch this again. You can find it on uh, our YouTube channel tomorrow. It will be available. But if you follow us also on, uh, sorry, if you follow us uh, on Facebook or Instagram, you will know all the upcoming events are um, coming very, very soon. So next week we will be back with some more webinars. So stay tuned. And uh, thank you, everyone. Again, have a lovely evening and take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good evening also from my side. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.